Hi and welcome to Carlisle College's virtual information session for hair, beauty and hospitality. So my name's Vicky and I'm the account manager at Carlisle College and today you'll be hearing from my colleagues Danielle, Emma, Kim and Paul and they'll be talking you through um, our courses that are available in hair, beauty and hospitality. So just to let you know how the session will work today, um, on your screen in front of you, you should be able to see a question and answer box in the top corner. Now, we can't um, see or hear you, so in order to communicate with us, you will have to use that box. Um, if at any point throughout the session you have any questions, please feel free to type those in there and we will have a dedicated que question, sorry, an answer session at the end um, where we'll be able to put your questions um, to the team as well. OK, so in the first instance, I'm going to introduce you to Andy Dodds who is the assistant principal um, at Carlisle College, and he will give you a bit of an introduction. Hello, to so I'm one of the directors at Carlisle College, and I'm here to give you an introduction to Carlisle College and an overview of what it's like to study here. So if we move straight on to the purpose and vision of Carlisle College, the purpose is to unlock potential through learning with a vision to be a college empowering learners and businesses through excellence and innovation for Cumbria's future prosperity. So you may not know, but Carlisle College did join NCG in 2017, and that's a national group of colleges. And that means that we're now part of one of the UK's largest providers of education, training and employability. But don't worry, there's no change for students. But what it does mean is that Carlisle College can benefit from NCG's full backing for future growth and development. And you can see there on the bottom of the screen some of the colleges which Carlisle College are part of as the NCG group, which does include Newcastle College as one of our local neighbours. So in terms of life at Carlisle College then, you will be treated like an adult and you'll be expected to act like one. It's a place where students are of all ages, courses run on different times and days, so there is no structured timetable as such like you would have at school where there's designated lunch times, designated break times, designated start and end times. Everybody's on completely different timetables tailored to their individual subject choices. So you won't hear the bell ring um, or anything like that. It is much of a, a different environment, but hopefully it will be an environment where you can meet new friends, you can learn new skills, and it will provide yourself with a stepping stone to the future. So if we then look at some of the uh, key uh, points of Carlisle College, some of the key facts, we are really proud of the fact that we have a um, fantastic industry standard equipment and resources. We are really well equipped at our college and it's just a shame that you can't physically be there to see our multi-million pound campus investment that has been millions of pounds put into Carlisle College over the last few years and really when people do visit us they are surprised by just how much the place has changed. And that is complemented by highly qualified tutors uh, with specialist knowledge and a wealth of industry experience. So the tutors that are teaching you or will teach you um, all have industry background, which is great for you. So that means if, for example, if you're studying hairdressing, you'll be taught by people who've worked in hair salons. If you're going to be studying motor vehicle, you'll be taught by people who have worked in motor vehicle garages. And all of that really supports great progression. This is something, a great theme for us, is that we are really proud of the progression of our students into work, further study, including university. And we do have a wide range of courses, and you'll find out about some as part of this virtual open day. And those courses range from entry level through to degrees. So if we move on then and look at some of the facilities within Carlisle College itself, we have our student services department, which will help you with financial support, university applications through UCAS, a careers advice service, and a whole range of pastoral care as well. You'll also be able to get involved in lots of competitions and council events. We have a student council, we have a learner voice, so you can really have an impact and a say on what happens at college and also get to enjoy the campus facilities as well. We have an Oyster Bistro and Restaurant, which is run by our catering students, and our Essence Salons, which are run by our hair and beauty students. So plenty to get involved in. 
Then, if we now look at why choose Carlisle College, well, importantly, if we look at what Ofsted had to say in their last report, they found that Carlisle College has successfully maintained a good quality of provision since the merger with NCG. And again, they picked up on what I've just been talking about in that teachers use their vocational expertise well to help learners understand the link between their studies and future work scenarios. And also that we've designed study programmes well to give learners the experiences that they need to help them progress towards their next steps in education, training or work. So it's very much not just about what you do at Carlisle College, but equipping you for what you are going to do next. So if we now take a look at the number of students at Carlisle College, we usually say we have around about 3,000 students, but don't worry, they're not all in the college on the same day. And those students uh, vary from our biggest uh, group of students is our 16 to 18 year olds, where we have just over 1,200 there. We also have a population of around about 700 apprentices who come into college one day a week as part of their apprenticeship, and then a range of adult learners and those who are studying university level courses as well. So if we now move on to look at again picking up on some of that student support, it is important that as well as having a course tutor you will also have a progress coach who is assigned to you and they will really make sure that you uh, have the best chance of success on your course and look after you and make sure that you're progressing well. That will uh, help with progress reviews with your tutor and also we have an extensive learning support team who can assist with any learning or disability needs that you may have to support you in your studies. Now looking at financial support, it's important to note that full-time further education students who are under 19 at the start of their course will receive free tuition. For those who are over 19, they may qualify for a 19 plus advanced learner loan. So you apply for that, the loan is paid directly to Carlisle College to cover your tuition fees, household income isn't taken into account, and you only start paying that loan back once your salary exceeds the threshold amount, which is currently at around about £26,000 per annum. You will also potentially be eligible for uh, free courses if you're on some form of support, such as Job Seekers Allowance or Employment and Support Allowance. And there's also help with um, childcare costs for those who require that. The free school meals provision continues on into college and there's potential for free travel for eligible students as well for those who live more than three miles away from the college. So lots of help and support there for you. Now, as part of your studies at Carlisle College, it is also important to recognise that you will have the opportunity to develop your English and math skills because we know how important they are for your future. So for those who haven't achieved their grade four at GCSE, in maths or English, there is the opportunity to work towards that grade four and have the opportunity to resit those exams. Course entry requirements now. Um, we, our courses operate at a range of levels from level one, level two, level three. And as you can see there, the level which you go on to depends on what grades you get at GCSE. So if you're looking at grades nine to four at GCSE, you'll be looking at level three courses. If you're grades uh, two or one, you'll be looking at level one courses. However, it is important to note that in some areas, you do have to start on lower level courses first in order to gain the necessary vocational skills to move up. So sometimes it's a combination of your GCSE results, your vocational um, knowledge, and in some cases as well, there may be a, a portfolio that has to be produced or a um, you may have to do an audition and that's typically in the arts area so do bear that in mind as well but our job is to make sure that we get you on the right level of course and don't worry about those who won't be sitting in exams this year and will be getting uh, calculated grades instead they are very much valid for us and we will take those into consideration so I've mentioned quite a bit about the destinations of our students and on the whole over 90% of our students go into employment or further study which is great and of those actually 200 students apply for university through UCAS each year so actually we're one of the largest institutions in North Cumbria in terms of the number of students that do go on to university and again is something which we can help you with. And as mentioned earlier, we have over 700 apprentices who work with 350 leading local employers. And we're very much geared up to make sure that you have the best possible destination. 
So we've got some examples now on the next slide, which again shows, for example, Lauren Woff, who studied level three business, who's gone on to the University of York to study business, down to the likes of Alice Ford, who studied level two engineering, who's now gone on to be a rail engineer apprentice with Network Rail. So a whole range there of destinations. Mentioned apprenticeships a few times there, but just to let you know that Carlisle College does offer apprenticeship uh, opportunities and they are uh, not just in your traditional areas, but also in areas such as accountancy, IT software development. So there are lots of opportunities there and that is where you will uh, be out in the workplace four days a week and then you come into Carlisle College to study typically one day a week. So finally then, uh, just to look at uh, what happens then, um, hopefully you'll be interested in making an application to Carlisle College. Applications are still open for September and you apply online um, through the Carlisle College website, find the course that you're interested in and then apply. You would then normally be invited to a future student event, but due to the circumstances, we are having to do those remotely at the minute, predominantly via phone, uh, where we will contact you following your application. That hopefully will then lead to an offer for a place on a course, which we would be delighted if you would accept, and that will then result you in being invited into enrol and in late August, ready to start in September. So finally then, in terms of uh, keeping in touch with us at Carlisle College, we'd love it if you would like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter and Instagram, and that'll give you a really good way of finding out what's happening on campus and keeping up to date with all developments at Carlisle College. What I'm now gonna leave you with is a college video, which although, as you can't be there today to see the college for yourself, this video will give you a bit of an insight into the facilities that we do have in Car at Carlisle College. So finally, on, on my behalf, I'd like to thank you uh, for attending this session. I hope that has given you a good overview of Carlisle College and that will kind of set the scene before you then have the opportunity to delve into more detail on the particular subject that you're interested in. Thank you. begin with hair. Hello, so I'm Emma, I'm a teacher in the hairdressing department. We've got um, the level one certificate in introduction in the hair and beauty sector, a level one certificate in hairdressing, a level two diploma in hairdressing, level three diploma and then a level two certificate in barbering. So I'll just go into a little bit of what we could do on each of those. So your level one certificate You'll have an introduction to the hair and beauty sector. 
One of the units is to present a professional image, styling women's hair, plaiting and twisting and creating a hair and beauty image. The level two diploma, you've got a unit for health and safety, working in the hair industry, client consultation for the hair services, shampoo, condition the hair and scalp, colour and lion hair, cutting women's hair, the art of dressing hair, display stock to promote sales in a salon, promote products and services to clients, create an image based on a theme and plaiting and twisting hair. The level three, you can go onto this after you've completed your level two and it's just a little bit more into each. So you've got to monitor and maintain health and safety practice, hairdressing consultation support for colleagues, colour hair to create a variety of looks, cut women's hair to create a variety of looks, style and dress hair, promote and sell products and services to clients, the colour correction unit and then a bridal hair as well. In the level two certificate in barbering, there is four different units. So it's again, the health and safety practices in the salon, client consultation for hair services, cut facial hair and cut men's hair. So some of the activities that we do in the hair and barbering department is the um, Scottish Hair and Beauty Trade Show. It's normally a trip to Glasgow. Um, we go to the Christmas markets, Alton Towers. Um, we've got events with Weller and L'Oreal. Um, there's different barbering con conventions and live events. And we've got um, Weller colour and cutting competitions. And we've had um, great success with the Concept Hair Magazine as well competition in recent years. So I'll leave you now with Kim from the beauty department. Thank you so much, Emma. Um, my name is Kim. I am currently the level two beauty therapy course tutor at Carlisle. Um, I'm going to take you through this evening some of the beauty courses that we offer, starting with the level one courses, um, ranging up to level three and four courses. So we have great progression um, within our department. So starting off with um, the level one certificate that we offer. Um, so within this course, it is um, a year long. So you start in September and you finish around June, July. Um, the course includes an introduction into the hair and beauty sector. Um, again, presenting a professional image within a salon. Um, you learn the basics of health and safety and why um, health and safety is really important as a therapist providing basic manicure treatments, providing basic pedicure treatments, so I hope you like to get your feet out. Um, working with others within the hair and beauty industry, so it's really important to be able to communicate effectively and that's something we'll explore. Um, skin care, so you do start off with a basic facial at level one and basic makeup application. The level two diploma in beauty therapy is um, a step up from the level uh, one and there's actually 11 exams, whereas there's uh, one exam at the level one. So some of the units that we cover in beauty therapy are the health and safety unit in, in more depth. Um, client care and communication, a large unit that's that's very important to understand as becoming a therapist. Providing manicure treatment, so you learn the full luxury manicure treatment with a hand and arm massage and a mask. Pedicure treatments, full luxury facials, so it's lovely coming in every week and having your skin looked after uh, for an hour. Uh, removing waxing techniques, so we learn to remove and um, apply warm and hot wax. Provide eyelash and brow treatment, so that's your tinting, your shaping of the brows. Salon reception duties, so you uh, take a full unit to, to focus downstairs on running the front of house reception, which Andy mentioned in his speech earlier, the Essence salons, which the hair and beauty students run. Um, apply skin tanning techniques, 
contribute to the effective running of a business and display stock to remote promote sales in the salon just to go back to the tanning one and um, spray and cream tanning is now included in the level two um qualification as well so just to take you through the level three beauty qualification uh, so we would do do your you would be able to um, achieve your level three once you've um, achieved your level two and um, if you already have a level two beauty therapy certificate then you are able to go right on to the level three so again more advanced but still keeping those common themes of the health and safety and the client care and working with others within the industry because it's such an, uh, an import those are important units uh, body massage so you learn full body including face and scalp you do facial electrical therapy so facial electrics there are six machines that you learn um, in level three all from um, sucking and toning and firming the skin and we also do those machines on the body as well microderm abrasion hot stone therapy massage individual permanent lashes and again the common themes of contribute to running an effective business and working with others within the industry and um, lastly uh, the level four um, is a pretty new qualification that we have been able to to offer um, through hard work of our HE um, colleagues had great success this year and the students that are on it are really enjoying the course and um, again it's another step up and another qualification to add uh, while you are a student at Carlisle College and um, so you start with academic studies and the science of the skin so those are written and um, normally in the form of a, an assignment and um, skin rejuvenation techniques uh, microblading so you've probably all recognized microblading and um, it's a very popular treatment at the moment within the industry and um, this course has a business management element to it so again it's taken it up that next level aesthetic practice and personal and professional development unit as well so we have lots of progression and um, routes to um, our department within beauty some of the enrichment activities so this is things that we like to do as part of the course to enrich your learning and broaden your experience and um, we have offered body shop products um, product workshops this year and uh, we were hoping last year and this year to do a trip to Iceland to the Blue Lagoon uh, which is a, a huge spa very popular common spa uh, within Iceland uh, but it's a fantastic um, opportunity but due to the current circumstances we were unable to get there uh, we have great links with centre parks um, who offer uh, training for us and we actually have some students actually currently working in centre parks at the moment and um, we have uh, something Emma mentioned earlier was um, the beauty trade shows we go to Glasgow so as well as the hair show we tie them up with the beauty um, shows as well and um, we have lots of in-house courses that we offer as well so we do things like um, lash lift training and um, we do Indian head training we do um, chemical peel I think we were looking at that and, and something that we cover at level four as well so uh, HD brows and um, semi-permanent lashes so there's lots of additional courses that we can offer um, as well in-house and um, so on that note oh there's me uh, on that note um, I'm going to pass you over to my colleague Danielle who is going to go through makeup with you Thanks, Kim. Um, so today I'm going to go through um, the different makeup courses we provide at Carlisle College. So you can start off at a level two, diploma in hair and makeup. Um, this one covers health and safety in the salon. You have an introduction to the art of photographic makeup, which covers looking at bridal makeup 
and um, high fashion makeup. You've also got apply makeup, which covers your day, evening and special occasions. You've got shaping and colouring of brows, which is similar to beauty, where we do tweezing of the brows to shape them and then tint them afterwards to get the right colour. We've got create an image, which create an image, we give you a theme usually, and you can do hair, makeup, and an outfit to create a nice final look. We've also got hair within this. Now, hair within makeup is very um, good to link in um, as in business and um, film and TV opportunities. So we do consultation of the hair, shampooing and conditioning of the hair, styling of women's hair. So this is using um, electrical equipment like tongs and um, hair straighteners. And then we also do temporary colouring of the hair, which can create some really nice bright colours um, and also kind of cover any greys that sometimes people might have. You then can progress on to the level three. Um, so this is a diploma in fashion media and theatrical makeup. So this is a route if you are very creative, if you are looking more to go with into TV, film and theatre. Level two is great for if you have got just um, an idea of wanting to work in a salon or wanting to be self-employed. But if you want to enhance your skins, skills, sorry, to look at film and TV, this is the progression route for you. So we start off with applying airbrush makeup. So this is through a compressor and it's a fine mist that applies foundation and blusher to the skin. So it creates a nice flawless finish. Great for bridal or high fashion looks. We've also got fashion and photographic. Within this one, though, we look at historical and period dramas. We also look at characters and we also cover high fashion and catwalk themes. Medium makeup is more of your prosthetics. So applying fake noses, ears, casualty makeup and special effects. So your cuts and bruising and also a character where you can apply facial postiche, which postiche is um, wigs and so you learn how to style sideburns, moustaches, beards, um, eyebrows and then you can expand your knowledge of pastiche with full hair wigs and how to style and set them. This is really good again for TV and for theatre. You also learn how to apply extensions and um, wefts so it's quite good as in enhancing your skill sets within hair. Camouflage makeup is more um, a cosmetic and um, working kind of within the NHS. It helps to cover birthmarks, scarring, blemishes, tattoos. Um, so you kind of learn a higher end of pigmentation, discoloration and how to kind of correct any flaws that way. We've got body art, which is massive at the minute. Um, you learn how to create illusion work. You can create um, some abstract kind of looks. And this can be on the whole body or it could be on the face and neck or the back. It's up to you. 2D communication is new this year and this one helps to enhance your drawing and sketching skills. It also helps you to build your presentation skills as well. Um, obviously within makeup you do have to have a, quite a confidence around clients and so it helps you develop that. And then we finish with creating image. Again this year we're doing villains so it's very creative. They design their own villain or they can really make um, the, a one from a film or TV and this will include hair, makeup and costume. Um, we have also developed our foundation degree in fashion, media and makeup, and this includes business management as well. So if you are wanting to, to progress and kind of learn more advanced skills within TV and film and also how to set up your own business, this is run over two years. So the first year helps um, with academic skills. So this is helping with writing, getting used to doing essays again if you've been out of education. You learn how to set up business and business management, how to promote yourself, how to network. You learn science of the skin, which anatomy and physiology is massive within our industry. You really have to have a good knowledge of how the skin works, how our body functions to be able to recommend the correct products um, for the clients. 
flat piece casting i don't know if those if, if there's anybody interested but flat piece casting is where you can create old age makeups or you can change somebody's face shape or body shape um so we work on that fashion and editorial makeup we get you out in industry when we come into the high fashion so you'd be working um on catwalks fashion shows and um, creating high-end editorial and fashion what looks posty she's still incorporated in your level four kind of your foundation degree because you need this skill to be able to get jobs in industry especially within tv special effects makeup is continued um, but you learn more of the high-end um, silicon roots and how to build and make casts and then you have your personal and professional development which again this helps to strengthen your confidence with networking and critiquing work on the second year you home in your skills and work more on the head and body prosthetics so this is where you can create creature designs you can create characters a bit like mrs doubtfire or um, marvel characters whatever you would prefer um, you develop your professional identity so we work on how you can create um, a mark on instagram or facebook twitter build a portfolio that you can be able to showcase to potential employers and then we do an exhibition. So this is where you showcase the work that you've done over the two years. Um, unfortunately, with the current circumstances, uh, we've been able to do that. But hopefully when things start settling down, we'll be able to have lots of visitors and be able to really show off the work that the students have been doing. Our enrichment activities um, through makeup are quite a lot. Um, we try and get as many industry professionals in to kind of dem do demonstrations, do product knowledge as our industry within hair, makeup and beauty is changing constantly. So we do always try our best to kind of get the professionals in. So uh, we use Airbase as our airbrush makeup. So they always come in and do demonstrations. Eve Taylor for our skincare, um, Pierre René, Mayo and Kobo for makeup. Samantha Helen does live demonstrations and comes in and visits us. She is amazing at body art. Um, we obviously go to the beauty trade shows as well as the Scottish hair and beauty trade show. We've had lovely trips um, on Christmas markets. Alton Towers is always a good one for us. We tend to get dressed up and, and scare people as we're going around, which is brilliant. And unfortunately, due to, to kind of current circumstances, we weren't able to go to Paris, but um, Make Up Forever do a, a trip where you can go around and, and kind of go through the, the actual um, production of, of the Make Up Forever brand. We've attended the Makeup Expo where um, Glow Up contestants, like the winning contestants were there, which was fantastic, and networking events. So this is where you'll meet potential employers and be able to do work experience um, on different kind of um, like theatre, film, catwalks. So it's a good way to develop um, your communication skills. We also have complementary therapy. Now I am going to give you a little bit of a, a run through with complementary therapy. Now this is a very holistic route. Um, there are two different levels. You mainly start off at level two because it is very intense. Um, you start off with basic reflexology. Um, and this is a pressure point technique on the feet, which is really relaxing and it helps to kind of stimulate nerves throughout the body. We also have body massage and pre-blended aromatherapy massage techniques. This is an introduction to massage, so it's a really good starting point um, for those that are wanting to more of work on holistic roots and maybe want to develop into chakras or Indian head massage as well. We have a clinical and business services principles and practices and healthy eating and well-being assignments now this all links and coincides with holistic therapy and we have a really in-depth knowledge of how to build a business how to make sure you are meeting the needs of the clients and how you can develop healthy eating plans and well-being and mental health programs for them Anatomy and physiology, it covers the whole body and every system within the body for complementary. Um, and also we do realistic working environment sessions. So this is where we can get clients coming into the salon so you can actually do case studies and treat clients um, within Essence Salon. 
Once you've completed level two, you can expand again your knowledge and, and skill set by going on to the level three. Now, this is more advanced techniques within reflexology, body, body massage, and you actually create your own aromatherapy blends. So it's the science of using essential oils and pre um, and base oils to create um, oils that will help to heal and relax clients. The clinical services, principles and practices and healthy eating is more in depth this time. You have to do case studies um, of nearly up to, well, I think one of them is 100 clients that you'll have to kind of do treatments on. Um, and so it's a really intense um, course, but it's very rewarding. Anatomy and physiology is really heavy um, with this one, so please make sure you are aware that science of the skin, the body, the muscles, the bones, everything is very important and vital for this course. And again, we run real work and environment sessions. So you'll build up a client base while you're at college that you'll be able to, once you finish, continue to use and hopefully set up a business of your own. Enrichment activities for complementary therapies is Eve Taylor Skincare. They also do spa treatments as well, so you can enhance on that one. Uh, Centre Parks training, they've hired quite a few of our students in the past um, because of our high standards at Carlisle College within beauty and complementary therapy. We do holistic trade show, which is designed specifically for complementary therapists. We also go to Professional Beauty North and the Christmas markets as well. So we like to team build across all the courses. So I'm going to introduce you now to Paul, who is hospitality and catering. Thank you, Danielle. Um, I'm going to give you a little overview of our courses now. So as you can see, we do level one certificate in hospitality, level two diploma in hospitality services, and a level three diploma in professional cookery. Um, all of our courses are designed to meet current industry standards. Um, the levels offered to the students largely depend, as, um, as Andy alluded to, um, on exam results, obviously, but for our area particularly, um, personal skills, knowledge, knife skills, experience, industry knowledge, work experience and study skills. Um, so level one certificate in hospitality. So we do the, the mandatory units, which are food safety and hygiene related. These are usually driven by legislation and law, uh, making sure that you, you're on the right side of the law. We also do core units, which are prepare and cook um, different units, vegetables, meat, poultry, um, again, all to industry standards. Uh, the level one course is designed really for people who are just dipping their toes into the, the world of catering. Um, people have a basic knowledge of catering. Um, there are foundation blocks of catering, really, so it is important that we kind of you know, build those blocks, get you into a into a, a good place. Um, the course is made up of kitchen practical units, theory units, restaurant practical, um, quite a lot of things that we do really to explore the whole industry. Um, I think it's important at the, that level particularly to know the industry and get a feel for what it's all about. Um, as I say, catering is kind of a, a way of life, really. It's often not classed as a job. It's quite an intense um, activity, really. Um, so next slide, please. Thank you. So uh, level two diploma. Um, really, f the, the requirements for this one are good knife skills, good study skills, good industry skills. So really, uh, we're looking for somebody that's got the level one skills um, and that want to progress into um, a professional kitchen, really. This is what we call our license to practice. So it is recognised in this industry as the minimum standard for most hospitality industry um, establishments. The main difference from level one is it's more in depth in theory, practical. The classes you need um, are longer, more, more practical, more theory. And it does um, depend on sort of you having a really good industry standard. You don't necessarily have to be working at this level, but it really does help. Um, when we look at just um, determining the suitability for these courses, certainly for level two and particularly level three, we often would um, throw in a skill scan test there. So we get you to come into college um, and let, let you demonstrate to us your, your skill level at this, at, you know, that you're coming in with. Um, next slide, please. Thank you. So again, um, level three, our high end qualification. So we're looking at the mandatory units, 
and the core units again, so preparing and, and various things. Again, to industry standards, the main difference with the level three really is it's set up as a, as a supervisory course. Um, the, co the core units, so the cooking units, are set to a high-end cutting edge techniques and processes. So it does ex it does need um, people that are working in industry to understand and to successfully complete this course. The main focus of the level three really is about managing people and resources. So it's quite quite, quite complicated, quite complex. Um, it's ideal for people that are currently working and looking to become sous chef, head chef. Um, again, it is essential at this level really that you're working. Um, the units that we look at are controlling resources, staff it related issues. So it's not really about managing yourself, it's more managing the resources and the biggest commodity of all, which is people, your staff. Um, it's about setting up businesses, setting up your own business, um, complementing other people's businesses, um, and also creating menus, costings to become more effective um, and maintain healthy business models. Thank okay, you. Next slide. So, um, Richmond activities, again, we are hampered a little bit this year with what's going on, but we do try and do as much as we can. Um, we do an awful lot of competition work because I think it's important um, that we get out there, see what, what the competition is, because in most catering industries, you're only as good as the, 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 the restaurant next door. So we do Nestle Top Door, Yum Chef of the Year, which we have won on a couple of occasions. Um, last year and the year before, we did Country Range Young Chef of the Year, which we um, got a runner up um, last year and we got the second place the year before, which was very, very nice. So the, uh, the, the win has eluded us just yet, but hopefully we can get there. Um, Scott Hot Hospitality and Trade Shows, again, we try and do as many of those as we possibly can. Again, just to keep your finger on the pulse of what's happening in the industry. We do have a lot of talks from the armed forces, particularly the catering support team. There's an awful lot of job opportunity out there for the forces. And we also do like to support um, various charities, again, having awareness of um, people's needs, supporting Carlisle City Food Bank. We also support, um, just before Christmas, the food hamper scheme um, at Brampton, which we made 100 Christmas cakes, 100 uh, Christmas puddings and 600 mince pies it was quite fun, um, which we donated to the hampers, which were nicely sent through to families of, of that were needing in the Carlisle area. So we did try and do an awful lot. Um, again, it's um, it's quite a tough industry, but it's a very rewarding one. There's not many jobs that you can work around the world because everybody eats. So. Um, Thank you very much for that. I hope you've uh, found that useful and informative. Thank you very much. Thank you, Paul. Um, so we'll open for questions now. Um, appreciate it's going to take a little while for you to um, get those typed out. So we'll give you a chance um, to do so. Um, and I'll have a little look for any questions we have so far. Oh, this is a good question. Um, I don't know who's going to answer this. You can fight amongst yourselves. Um, if you're unsure of whether you want to do hair or beauty, which course do you recommend doing? Who wants to? Um, I'll answer it. Him, I'll pop you on the screen. Am I on uh, unmute? Yes, can hear you, yeah. <laughs> um, hello, so just um, to answer your question, um, I think it depends what specifically it is out of beauty or out of hair that it is that you, you really want to learn. And I would say to begin with, you can swap um, courses so if you did start a course and it maybe wasn't the right one for you right away we can work with your tutor and communicate and, and you do have um, a period to, to change if needed but also you can um, do beauty in the first year that you're with us and then hair in the second and then even branch off to makeup as well so there is opportunities to um, work across uh, all the courses that we offer and um, it doesn't just mean that if you start with beauty that you have to stick with beauty you can start beauty and, and you know if you really enjoy it and it's something you've got a keen interest in but you fancy hair the year after 
then that's absolutely fine. Um, the same as if you decided you'd done beauty, but then fancied the makeup route, you could go down that route or complementary therapy. So you can mix and, and change. But I would say if it was makeup that you did have a keen interest in terms of the beauty side of it, um, look at the level two hair um, and media makeup because that's combined. But it, it just depends on what specifically it is that you're wanting out of the beauty or out of the hair. Perfect. Thank you, Kim. Sorry, we've got another one, so I'll leave you there. Um, I've received an email acknowledging my application for the beauty therapy course level two, but I don't have any information um, about the stu future student event. Should I have received this as I've sent my application in for the course? I'm not sure. Do you know if they've gone out yet? Um, I'm not 100% sure if they've gone out yet. However, um, what I can do is uh, if you could just possibly write your email or if there's any way that we can... Um, yeah, I'll tell you what, I'll give them your email. Is that... Yeah? Absolutely, yeah. And then if you would just like to email me your um, name and things and I'll chase that up for you. Oh, I can see Paul's typing, but I'll pop him on screen because it's a good question. So it might help um, a few people out. Um, what equipment will I need for college for hospitality? Right, we do provide um, an equipment package, um, which this currently costs about £230. That provides knives, all the equipment that you're going to need right through to level ones, two and three. Um, and obviously most of our students qualify for some form of support package. Um, so the cost, it is quite a lot of money, but it is the tools of your trade. Um, and I don't really know that many people um, ch are charged for them because there's always a way of funding it through through whatever. So no, I mean, we provide all the all the ingredients. Um, so the student provides literally just um, pens and paper and, and that kind of thing. But we provide everything else. Um, okay. Thank you. Sorry, Kim, you back up. Okay. <laughs> um, what are the entry grades for Level 2 Beauty? Yeah, so the entry grades at the moment are looking at four threes, including maths and English, if possible. Perfect. OK, and if that person hasn't achieved those grades, um, what would you recommend they do? I would recommend if you've got the heart set on beauty therapy, then um, come in with us at level one. Um, that will give you a really good stead uh, while you're doing your level one to work towards those maths and English grades, uh, which you ideally need for gaining employment. Perfect, thank you. And Danielle, I'll pass this one to you. Put you on the spot. Um, so this um, person has said they're unsure of which course to take um, in terms of hair, beauty or makeup, what would you recommend would be a good place for them to start? Um, OK, so it all does depend on which career path you're wanting to go down. Um, if you were mainly interested in doing um, working within a salon, um, you can start off with hairdressing or beauty. Um, both skills are very, very useful. Um, it depends if you would rather focus on the hair or if you'd rather focus on the person's skin and body. Um, if you are more interested in the makeup side of things, as in everyday makeup, bridal makeup or even creative makeup, I'd start off with kind of a level two in makeup and build your skills that way. It's very hard over here, unfortunately, um, because we're so used to having a conversation with people and kind of getting their interests and knowing where the passion lies. And, and unfortunately, due to the circumstances, we can't have that. But what I would say is apply for a course if it's hair, beauty or makeup. And every tutor is very open to have that conversation with you when we call you up. Once you put that application in, we have your details and we will be more than willing to kind of give you advice and guidance from that phone call. So even if you don't necessarily pick makeup with myself and you're more interested within beauty, I would pass you on to Kim and Kim would then give you a ring or Emma and then Emma would give you a ring. So please don't be afraid to kind of just put an application in. It's not set in stone, but it might be easier for us to then give you that phone call and offer you some more advice. Yeah, I think that's really good advice. Actually, you can you can change just because you've applied. It doesn't mean we hold you to to what you've applied to. No, um, not <laughs> Kim, you back up. 
Yeah. So there's two questions here, but they're sort of very similar, so we'll combine them. Um, what equipment or uniform do you need for beauty? Yeah, so um, the uniform, it, we are very strict on uniform. Um, just to mention that standards are really important as a beauty therapist. So plain black footwear, black socks are worn, uh, black trousers, plain black trousers and a tunic. Um, we provide the tunic, there is a cost for it. Um, but you do have to wear that tunic, same as within a salon environment, so it's preparing you for, for a place of work. Um, the tunic this year, um, pass me over to Danielle if I get this wrong, you can shake yeah. your head, it's not right. Um, but the tunic is normally between 30 and £40. Pounds. Um, however, just um, on the back of what Paul mentioned before in terms of uh, the catering equipment, uh, there is a certain amount of funding available and things. So if it is an issue with costs, costings, um, there is funding that you may be eligible for that can help you out. Um, secondly, there's also kits um, that we would um, support you with if you were eligible for funding. If not, there is a cost for the kit. It includes all the equipment for the level one, two or three course um, that you would, whichever was your level. Um, really good setting you up for um, employment um, and it allows you to practice while you're at home. The level two kit is around about £150 and um, but again you know support and things are available as well we would just cross that bridge when we come to it if there was uh, any issues but this is something that can be discussed as well if you did apply for the course and um, once we have a one-to-one -one conversation with yourself. Perfect. And there's a question here. Um, are all 16 to 18 courses free? Um, they are, aren't they? Um, yes. It's not my area of expertise, but yes, they are. And <laughs> yeah. um, there's no cost cost if you are 16 to 18. Yeah, that's fine. Um, and we have another question for yourself, Paul. So I'll pop you up. Um, Again, um, someone's asked about uniform for college um, and also uniform for hospitality. So I'll pass that one to you if that's OK. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, I mean, the kit that we um, the kit list we provide, as I say, it provides the knives um, and all it, all the chef uniform. And there is also if in the level one course when they're doing restaurant, um, there's a restaurant uniform, uniform provided as well. So for that £230, you actually get the shoe, the safety shoes, uh, two pairs of trousers, two jackets, aprons, hats. Uh, we are very strict on the uniform. Um, as Kim mentioned, most of our courses are um, because it is industry standards. It is a, a personal protective equipment. So, yeah, um, the uniform is part of the package so that all comes within that 230 pounds again as i said it's a lot an awful lot of money but most of our students tend to work at weekends in various hotels and restaurants so for that 230 pound they very quickly make it back but mostly our students get it funded somehow by bursaries and various things so again like kim alluded to we we discuss it with the students and we, we pass the information on to our student services who will help them with with advice on finance where how things have been paid for course fees and all sorts of things so uh, yeah and paul just to add to that mm -hmm. if yep. your students are in theory so um would they just wear their normal clothes because believe it or not we have had some people coming in a boy <laughs> to sit in the classroom all day so um yeah there's no sort of expectation there or no, we don't. We don't really. I mean, obviously, it's just comfortable wear. Um, we do ask people that they don't wear, you know, T-shirts with nasty slogans on. and um, But, you know, just comfortable. Um, you know, that's that's all we ask, really. Perfect. Thank you. Um, I've got another question here for you, Paul, just um, whilst you're on. Um, what are the entry requirements for the catering course and which course would you recommend for someone who wants to decorate cakes or confectionery? OK, um, we don't really specialise in in um, cake decorating. Most of our courses run around um, multi skilled, largely because the industry out there want um, multi skilled staff, um, just the way the industry is at the moment. Obviously, patisserie 
um, is probably about 3% of, of all of the jobs out there. Most places want students to be able to do a bit of everything. So consequently, we deliver hours as a multi-skilled. We do do cake decorating as part of the, the level twos and three, but not specifically. Um, really, we, we I mean, our course is designed um, to get you into the industry, of course. Um, what was the other question? Sorry, which course? It was what well, the entry requirement. OK, is. yeah. Um, well, I was just to say it's maths and English as a, as a starting point, but largely um, what your skills are, um, you know, just just because you've got a degree in whatever doesn't make you make you a good chef. So it's really about having those practical skills. So again, this is why we, we use our the facilities and kitchen to have a skill scan at the different levels because we have, we have one academic year to get you through a qualification. And we have to assume that if you're on a higher level course that you've got the lower level skills behind you. So really, um, it is a, a, a case of kind of um, you demonstrating what you're what you're able to do. Uh, we have a discussion um, and work out what's the best package. Um, given that you're probably going to work for at least 50 years, it's really important to get it right at this at this stage. What happens in the first couple of years of of, of building your 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 building blocks of your trade makes a massive difference in your earning power. So I think it's in, it's important that you you know we have an awful lot of students that want to be a head chef in a day, and realistically that's not going to happen. So it is important that you uh, learn your trade, learn it well, and more so to become plausible when you start managing your own kitchen. Um, a good kitchen doesn't, you know, the, the Gordon Ramsay scene where a demanding an awful lot of kitchens work on um, people wanting to follow you as, a, as their leader um, and wanting to do things for you. So it's really important that you, uh, you, you kind of learn the trade. And as I say, learning those, if it takes you an extra year to learn more skills, that could mean in 10 years the difference between earning 20,000 and 50, 60, uh, whatever thousand. So it's important to to sort of start off at the right place, really. Thank you, Paul. Um, Emma, I've got a question for you. So I'll pop you up. Yeah. So the question is, um, I'm assuming this person means in the workplace, would tattoos and or piercings be a problem in hairdressing? Or um, no, as long as like the tattoos aren't going to affect your client, um, it's fine, yeah, if, if it's like, Somewhere that's going to affect the client, you could just put a plaster or cover it. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. Um, do, 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 do. Back to you, Kim, for beauty. Here we go. Um, so if you're doing the beauty course, um, do they have to provide their own kit? No. So um, part of the um, course, we do have equipment for you to use. Um, we do have funding available. So if you are um, over the age of 19 or under, there is different um, funding dependent. Um, the college does provide um, the kit. However, if the college does pay for your kit, then it's not something that can be taken home. It's something that stays in college stock for you to learn with. Um, however, if you decide you want to purchase your own kit, then it's yours to take home and bring into college. Um, so there is options available and we will explore that with you, depending on what course you, you decide to go for, whether it's level one or level two. Um, we can have that one to one conversation, but please don't worry about kits um, because there is a lot of, um, of support and availability. It would just be your choice whether you wanted to have it at home to work with and we do have that option available or you want to uh, you know have it in college to, to learn with thank you kim um, so we've got a question here regarding applications um so once you've applied for the course um when does someone get in touch to discuss and when do you find out if you've got onto the course so in terms of your application um the process after you've applied would be a future student event and that would take place at the moment um are you guys doing them over the phone yeah so within sort of 10 working days of your application going in, you receive um, a date and a time um, and you'd be contacted by the relevant tutor um, for that course. Um, who, how long is it taking to get offers from future student event? Would you expect anybody? Do you know how long it takes after that for an we offer? Give, 
we can offer them a conditional place um, over the phone. Um, it usually, obviously, we are still waiting on grades at that point. Um, we can't usually offer an unconditional grade, uh, uh, um, offer, sorry, unless they can show evidence of that. So um, we try and do it over the phone as quickly as possible, but sometimes there's a bit of a waiting period. And then after we've given you an offer, we then pass on the details, which then you'll receive the offer in writing and whether or not you want to accept that or maybe you want to, to kind of change the course or change um, direction with the college. Perfect. Thank you, Danielle. Um, Paul, just a quick one here. How long are the catering courses? Yep, um, all of our courses, all three are one academic year. So going back to my last thing, it's really important that we get in the right place at the right time. And um, we're going to have, we do have to pack in a huge amount of work in that one year, uh, which is 36 weeks. It's not a long time when you get, get down to it. Um, but yeah, one academic year. Perfect, thank you. Emma, a question regarding hairdressing. Um, what are the uniform restrictions and requirements for hairdressing um, and what is needed for hairdressing courses, so equipment and things? OK, so hairdressing again, it's um, black trousers, black shoes. Um, you need your feet fully covered if possible. Um, and then you get a tunic as well provided. Um, with everything that's going on as well now, there's um, full PPE that's got to be worn in the salons, but that's all provided at the college. Um, our kits are around about £280, which is quite steep, but it's literally got everything in that you need to set up and practice at home. Not everybody buys their own kits. There is a lot of equipment in the salons as well for you to use in college. Perfect, thank you. Um, I think that is the end of our questions. We've had quite a few there, so that's great. Um, oh, this is a question here. What happens if you get offered a place on two courses? When do you have to decide which course you want to do? It can change up until kind of the enrolment, even if they enrol and then after a few weeks they feel like it's not the course of them, we can transfer them as well. Yeah, that's that's a really good point. If you start a course, as, as Kim said earlier, if you start a course in September and you get to the end of September and think it's it's not for me, I, I wish I'd done something else, then that's still a, a possibility would be to, to change that. So that's fine. I think we've just got one more popped up there. Um, Kim, beauty. Um, do you have to get grade three at maths and English for beauty? Would you accept a four? Would you accept four grades three at other subjects? Sorry. Um, as it stands at the moment, the um, entry qualifications for um, level two stands at um, grades three, four grade threes, including English and maths. Um, that's how it stands at the moment. However, um, it would depend on interview and um, face to face as well. Um, but as it stands, that that's the college um, benchmark at the moment. Yeah, it's worth pointing out that you will get assistance in maths or English if you needed to study that further. So if you were struggling to get those grades, um, then you could always apply for the level one, couldn't you, Kim, and, and study oh. to work up? Absolutely, and I think it's it's worth saying to everybody um, that the reason we have those it, those benchmarks is to make sure that the course that you are on, we, we aren't um, overloading you because you'll be doing your maths and English again as well um, and, and trying to achieve those at the same time. So it's got to be manageable um, for yourself as well. So, so take that into consideration as well. Perfect, thank you. And sorry, we've just had another hairdressing question there for you, Emma. What are the entry level qualifications for hairdressing? I think they mean entry requirements to get on the okay. call. Yeah, so it's um, pretty much the same as beauty, to be fair, but th there is there's the opportunity to do your maths and English as alongside. Perfect, thank you. Um, right, I think that's all the questions that we have for today. Um, so what I'm going to do is pop um, in the Q&A um, box there our um, general email address. So you can contact the college um, on social media if you have any questions after today. Um, you can email the reception team and they will distribute your email to the relevant department as well. Um, oh, sorry, 
I think we've just got a last minute question come through. We won't actually, no, I wouldn't believe. Um, Paul, timetable for hospitality? Yeah, it, it's it's tricky at the moment um, because let's say we need to, there's so many things we need to consider what real work environments we can provide given the, the restrictions that would be in place in September. Yeah. Um, the numbers, there's no all sorts of things that we need to put into the mix to decide what the timetables would be. Um, generally speaking, um, if you need maths and English, it could be a five five day week, um, Monday, Monday, Friday. If you don't need maths and English, then it would certainly be a minimum of three days. Um, but it, again, it's a study programme that's designed around the person. So it's incredibly difficult without having the, a one to one conversation with yeah. the person, what that study programme would become and what it would yeah. translate to in, in, a, in, a, in a daily sort of scenario, really. Yeah, that's so difficult to answer that one. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So it's definitely worth getting your application in um, and then um, obviously that will be discussed with you in more detail at a future student event. Um, but I think that's sort of worth commenting for everybody isn't it given the restrictions that we are facing all of the facilities we are spreading um students out more so it, it might be that timetables are slightly different to what they've been in previous years but again we just don't know what situation will be in come september and that may be able to um return to um some form of normality but we shall see um so thank you everybody for watching today's um information session i hope you found that beneficial um, and we've answered some of the questions that you have as i said any more questions you can contact the college on social media i've popped the email address into the announcements there um, so you can pick that up too um, and i'm sure the team will be happy to answer any questions that come through to them as well um, thank you danielle emma kim and paul for your time this evening as well and for going through all those questions with us too um, and hopefully we will receive your applications soon um, and see you all in september so thank you very much